Hello everyone, welcome back for another video. In this video, we're going to talk about Brocale Plexus. Especially one sequence I want to highlight today, it's a T1 3D space. Why do we need such a sequence in this kind of protocol? I will also share my thoughts regarding that. But nonetheless, our way to optimizing this sequence was a little bit difficult. We are doing this on 3T and it was not easy because we went from images like this to this. I've been doing this sequence on 1.5 as well. It was much easier, but it seems like it's a lot of more in homogeneities on 3T. We did a small adjustment. It gave us a different results. Stick around and I will show you. For those who are new, my name is back again. I'm an MRI reader. Also, so in my channel, I'm covering things from basic to advanced. I'm like topics, tutorials, troubleshooting, just like this one. If you haven't subscribed yet, considering doing so. Most of our brachial plexus cases, we try to do it on 3T. And with 3T, you're able to have high resolution and so on and so on. So our radiologists really wanted to have a T1 where 3D space in the protocol, but it was not easy to optimize. Nonetheless, I will show you what we did. Uh, let's go to the scanner. All right, we're currently at 3T and we're using XA50. As you can see here, I already marked uh, our right here, so B0 shim. So it gives you a clue of what we did. Yes, it's the shimming. So what did we do when it comes to the shimming? We tried first the standard and uh, activated uh, the visualization of the B0 shim. So you can see where it's placed uh, automatically. So it's placed like this on the neck area. Uh, we're doing in the corner plate, the T1 space. And uh, yeah, so we did that one. And the next test we did was changing that to a standard neck. As you can see here, it's almost the same, but we're now using the B0 standard neck. I will show the results of that as well. And then it came to my mind, going from a standard, I also noticed that why is this box so small? I really wanted to cover the whole field of view. So I extended that box to the covering the whole field of view. And by doing that, I also was hoping that my be helpful for the homogeneities, right? And the last thing we did was using the absolute mode. The absolute mode is something new for me. I've never seen it before until we got the XA platform. So uh, what is the absolute? We know that this help function or a user manual, you can push on the keyboard F1 and you get to into the, the manual. So absolute adjustment measurements and evaluation are performed in absolute mode. The determination of absolute B0 values can improve B0 homogeneity. Absolute shim mode is more time consuming than standard mode. When it comes to the last sentence right here, I, I'm not sure about that because when I'm using the standard mode compared to absolute mode, I felt it was the same in the scan time. Nonetheless, I will dive into that and try to figure out if it's a long scan time. Are we talking about seconds? Are we talking about minutes? I really believe if it's longer, only seconds, because I wouldn't have noticed if the protocol was so much extended from going from absolute shim to the standard mode, right? But I, I would try to figure it out. All right, so we did four tests with different shim modes, and I will show you the results. All right, when it comes to the B0 shim, the standard, we got images like this. You can see it's not homogeneous all the way around in the whole field of view. Seems like it's very it's dark and it's not good at all. The standard, Neck, not good at all. Looks more or less the same as the standard. And the standard, when I did extend the, the B0 shim, the green box, looks the same. Absolute, absolute seems to be improved the image a lot. You see, we're going from these kind of images to that. So that gives a lot of improvements using absolute. I saw uh, a post on LinkedIn where this guy was using absolute mode on a fat set when it comes to the torical part and the spine. So it came to my mind that absolute mode is, is good when it comes to fat, sad, and difficult areas, but not on a T1 rated sequence. So you can see it's working here as well. It's needed. Uh, so it's a, it's a head up for that. And why do we need such a sequence like this? I will also show you some images why we need that or we wish to have that. So this is the reason. We know in a protocol we have a 3D space stir where we, where we visualize the nerves very well in all planes if it's isotropic. So this is more or less isotropic images. And we want the corresponding T1 weighted in the same uh, position. So the, for the reason for that is that you can see the nerves and you can cross wrap it to a T1 weighted sequence in all planes. And it's uh, very well delineated. And 
in our old protocol, we had 2D, T1 weighted, sagittal, right? 2D. So it was another breeding artifacts arising from here. So very difficult to see the nerves and the, the vessels. So using a 3D like this, it's a big, better chance to have a good images, but not only one plate, on three plates. The pitfall, of course, is takes a little bit longer scan time compared to a 2D. But if you can have images like this without doing rescans of the 2Ds, well, that's it, guys. I hope you find this video valuable. I hope you also learned something new today. I did learn um, by doing this, and that's why I really want to share with you guys. Nonetheless, before we close up, I do have a question for you. Do you have a T1 weighted 3D space in your protocol? If so, let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, do not forget to push the like button and hit the subscribe. Hit the notification bell so we get a ding ding whenever new videos may be coming. Until next time, stay safe, take care, and I'll catch up with you. Peace out.